You are listening to the Horse Radio Network, part of the Equine Network family. Hi, I'm Jennifer Wood. And I'm Jennifer Connor. From Equestrian Businesswomen, and you're listening to Equestrian B2B, the podcast that brings together industry leaders, entrepreneurs, and equestrians for conversations about how they build and sustain a successful business. On today's show, we speak with Ashley Bond about her career in show jumping, what she has learned, and the start of her new side business. Ashley Bond is a 39-year-old Olympian, having competed in the 2020 Tokyo Olympic Games in show jumping for Israel, where she finished in 11th place individually. She jumped at two FEI World Equestrian Games and four FEI World Cup jumping finals. Ashley has won multiple five-star Grand Prix events, won the Grand Prix at the Devon Horse Show, and the $1 million AIG Grand Prix at Hits Thermal. She runs her business, Ashley Bond Show Jumpers, out of Wellington, Florida, and is a California native. Ashley recently began a new venture, O3 Elixir Skincare, where nature meets science to bring products that are as effective as they are pure. Their mission is to provide clean, natural skincare solutions that truly work while caring for your skin and the planet. Ashley started O3 Elixir Skincare with her two partners, Jennifer Apellian, who started Equigreens with ozonated oil, which led into O3 Skincare, and Elise Lazel, a registered nurse who runs Angel's Med Spa. They are passionate about holistic organic health and natural beauty. Hey, Equestrian B2B podcast listeners, ready to level up your biz? Ride Every Stride specializes in tailoring brand identities for equestrian businesses. From logo development, essential stable accessories, and custom product branding to exclusive awards, VIP event must-haves, and chic apparel, they've got you covered. Visit RideEveryStride.com, use code B2B15, that's B2B15, at checkout for an exclusive 15% discount. Elevate your brand with Ride Every Stride, supporting women in business and equestrian excellence. Hi, Ashley. Thanks for joining us here today. Hey, guys. Of course. Thanks for having me. So, Ashley, I know I've been following your career for a long time, obviously, writing press releases about you and (laughs) and, um, in the show ring. And I've been noticing on social media uh, for a while that you've had a new product that you've been promoting. So, um, you know, we talked and I thought it would be cool to learn more about it and kind of learn about that evolution and kind of your career leading up to it. So we're excited to talk to you today. Thanks for having me. Yeah, I'm really excited to talk about all the things. <laughs> so I know, you know, you had um, the ponies and the junior career and kind of riding has been a part of your life for a long time. Was it always your dream to be a professional show jumper? Yeah. Um, you know, my my dad put me on when I was six months old. So um, you would say it was it was before I learned to walk. And Mm -hmm. then obviously, I found the love on my own, um, and just became horse girl obsessed. Um, But yeah, it's been it's been an evolution, because I kind of took a step back uh, from riding when I was 19 to 21. Um, But I feel like it was really needed, because then I was able to come back and have this newfound passion and fire for the journey of our sport, not just getting in the ring and jumping and winning and all of that, which is great and fun. But as you know, that's such a small aspect of what we do. And um, you lose so much more than you win. So you better enjoy the development of the horses and just being with them and the day to day if you really want longevity in the sport. So I feel like that step back made me realize like that this was part of like my soul and who I am and what I needed to be me. Um, So yeah, it was, it was good to do that. And then ever since then, it's been kind of like nonstop. (laughs) Yeah. What did you do when you stepped back? Um, So I, my mom and dad, um, I grew up in LA. uh, So my mom and 
dad are in the movie industry. My dad was an actor for the first part of his life. And then my mom has a production distribution company. She's a movie producer. Um, so I actually ended up working for her company and worked under Frank Yablons, who ran Paramount and uh, Universal and uh, Greenlit the Godfather and wrote Mommy Dearest and all of these amazing movies. And um, so I got to actually be his executive sis- assistant for a, a while. And he taught me a lot about business and um, actually writing. We got to rewrite scripts together, which was really cool. Um, Yeah. So I had like this amazing experience. I also like uh, dabbled in acting, um, did acting classes and uh, singing, uh, recorded some stuff, uh, some demos and stuff. Um, But then I realized that I really wasn't into being in front of the camera so mm-hmm. much. Um, so, you know, found my way back to writing through working for my mom's company because she was filming a movie in um, New Zealand and uh, it was an animated movie at, in Phil, uh, Peter Jackson's, uh, Phil, Peter Jackson, yeah, uh, yeah, studio over there. And um, so I was like bored one day and I was like, yeah, I'm going to go find somewhere to ride because it was so beautiful. And then I went with, uh, I was 21. So I went with this other guy who was the same age. And it was just the two of us for like three and a half, four hours roaming the countryside of New Zealand and running around. And I think it just like, it was a total God thing because it it just Mm -hmm. like was so meant to be. And it made me kind of get connected with the horse and why I did this, you know, from the beginning. And I feel like when you're young and you're doing this, it kind of just becomes second nature. And some of us like, you know, don't lose that, but definitely I lost like that, um, that core aspect of why we do what we do. And it's because we love the horses and, and all of that. So it brought me back to that. And then fast forward now I'm 39 and, um, been back almost 20 years, which is just so crazy (laughs) to think about because it feels like yesterday in a lot of ways. Um, For sure. So, yeah. Jen and Maria and I say that a lot. We're like, weren't we in college together like three years ago? Right now. I know I'm going to be, I I know I like just turned 39 in April, but it's already July. And I'm like, how was that three months ago? Like, (laughs) you know, and I'm going to be 40, which I'm totally embracing. Like, I don't even, I'm not one of those people who's like, oh my gosh, I, you know, I'm going to lie about my age and stuff like, like I'm so (laughs) embracing getting older. It's not easy, but that's kind of also with the new company and stuff. I think mm-hmm. uh, we can get into that, but um, yeah, I'm just enjoying the the journey and the process. And I think because I've made, like I've pretty much achieved all the goals that I had set out for myself when I was younger, becoming an Olympian, going to the world equestrian games, you know, obviously I want to do better at them. Like I was 11th last Olympics. It would be nice to do better, mm-hmm. but I feel like I've done all those things. So it's kind of like, now what? Yeah, and yeah. a bit time to set so, some new goals. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Mm, that's really cool. I know so many times I think that we we need a reset. I know I definitely have growing up. My parents are racehorse trainers. I grew up in cool. an industry. The you know my whole life revolved around it. So there have been moments in time where I've taken a little bit of a step back because I just feel burnt out from mm-hmm. going all the time. So I completely yeah. understand that. And you do when you're when you're, it's like a business for you. Uh, sometimes you don't step back and look at the horses. And that's what the love yeah. is, and and it's more business. So yeah, a hundred percent. And That's the business really... that you didn't ask for and that you didn't start, you know, <laughs> you were yeah. just thrown into it. I was thrown into it. Exactly. Like you, you know, and yeah. then there's the people that find it, you know, that had enough, their families had nothing to do with it. So I feel like maybe in that respect, they stick with it more than someone who just like was put on at such a young age and like really was doing this before they even had that uh, more than just, I really like riding and I want to ride, mm-hmm. but they didn't like make that conscious decision of like, this is what I want so badly Yeah, that, you know, I'll do anything to just keep doing it, you know? So it's like, you take it for granted for sure. Yes, absolutely. Cause it's so easy. Like, you yep. know, my parents made that. So just right there at my fingertips. So I didn't have to work. Like we had the horses in our backyard. We had an arena, I, you know, barn and all of these things, which I'm super grateful. It's just when you're young, you're a kid, you don't, you haven't had to work hard for it. So you kind of, yeah, you kind of just like are a bit flippant about it. Yeah. And, and actually I've said this to Jen before, 
um, my parents, it was almost like, like there wasn't a choice. Like, you know, most parents want your family, you, your kids to grow out of the horse phase because it's so mm -hmm. expensive. And I'm like the shoemaker's kid who yeah. like we had horses and my parents are probably a little disappointed that I didn't embrace that and go into training or, mm -hmm. you know, more yeah. competitive riding. But from a young age, I never had that. Like I love to ride, but I was, I knew how much work it would take for me to go to the Olympics or like be a veterinarian or be the trainer. And I wasn't yeah. willing to give up some of those things in my life to do that. I knew that yeah. pretty early on. You That's know? amazing because that you knew that. Yeah. Yeah. Because you know, it's just, I like took it for granted. Now I'm like, yeah. oh man, I wish I maybe would have focused a little bit more on that and who knows where I could have gone, but yeah. you know, I'm, I'm pretty happy with where I'm at in my life. So, you know, I think we all yeah. end up where we're supposed to be. <laughs> exactly. I couldn't agree more. And I also feel like too, sometimes kids, like, I feel like there's very distinct either you like go into the business and embrace it or you go the other way. Like I have a younger brother who he absolutely does nothing with horses because his, his life did so much with horses growing up that mm -hmm. he went, he absolutely, he's in finance. Like he's oh, that's smartest, funny. Yeah. He's the yeah. smartest one of all three of us. I say all the time, yeah. <laughs> two of us, you know, I still have horses and ride and I'm, I'm involved in the industry for my mm -hmm. job. And so is my other brother, but <laughs> they're the, the youngest he's like nope no horses don't want yeah. my kids to have horses like they can go pet them at the barn but they oh, better not funny. fall in love with them yeah yeah my brother also just wait he's, he's also completely out of the horses he works with my mom in the movie yeah. industry yeah it's yeah it's so, so funny how you yeah it is <laughs> it's cool it's cool yeah so going back to a little bit in your career um uh, you had a lot of early success with cadet Mm -hmm. uh, how'd you keep One yourself my going through the ups and he downs? The of best. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so Cadet, I, we still own him. He's over in Kentucky Aww. at a friend's farm. He looks, he's 27. Oh he looks God. incredible. He's so sound. He looks amazing. I'm like, he could come back to show, like, <laughs> at least for my kid, but no. I was going to say your daughter could. <laughs> yeah, I know. She'll get Donnie, so it's okay. She'll, <laughs> right. she'll, be, she'll be just fine. Um, but yeah, I think... Um, you know, I was 24. I had just come back not long before taking that big break. I got cadet. I was 20. It was 2008 when I got him in the summer. So I just turned 23. Yeah. And um, within like we shipped him up uh, to Spruce Meadows. He got there on the off week. And by the second week, I won that Sun Life Financial the five-star like Sunday Grand Prix. Um, so the success was like so quick with him and it was my first international competition. Like I really, um, yeah, I hadn't done anything international because I quit at 19 when I should have then been going off to do that. And so then 23 was when I went, you know, in Spruce and did all that. And then um, that's when George saw us and put us on the Buenos Aires team at the in no, I think it was the end of twenty uh, 2023, where we jumped for the U.S. team and we won the, you know, we won the Nations Cup there. And then 2020, uh, two, sorry, I, 2023, what am I talking about? 2008, yeah. <laughs> 2008. And then 2009 was when, um, you know, I went and had all that success in Europe with the U S team with cadet. And then it like catapulted my career. Um, so definitely that was like, it felt easy. Cause like I got yeah. this horse and two weeks later I'm like winning and it was just up, up, up. And then 2009 was like the year of my life for my career. And, um, 2010, he kind of like, um, kind of took a little bit of a downhill with, him with physical stuff and I don't come from a family of like my dad rode but he did cutting first then he did polo horses he didn't start show jumping till he was 40 so we didn't have like I didn't have a multi-generational background of like horsemen that were in the show jumping sport you know so yeah. for like management and all of these things that I've learned since then I've, I mean like the program is just so much better now I'm able to keep horses sounder, longer, do less, you know, less is more. And I just didn't have that sophistication back then. So 
I mean, he had physical stuff that he had, but I think if I'd had him now, I could have kept him going for a lot longer than I did mm. back then and like done things a bit different um, to hopefully have had him continue on through his late teens. Whereas I had to retire him, I think early 14, 15, like from just things. Um, so that was, that was tough. And then kind of had that down slope. And then I got Chella um, and we had success, you know, and won the million and jumped in Gihon and we won the Nations Cup there with the U.S. team. And I was second in the five-star Grand Prix with her there. And, but it was kind of like, she also had like stuff and wasn't the easiest and, and then kind of had the down, you know, like after her success kind of had a lull in the career. Um, but then I had Donnie as a young horse while I still had her, but we weren't obviously banking. Like we bought him as a six-year-old with three shows under his belt. Like he wasn't a horse that I got older thinking or knowing that this had already jumped big jumps and would be my next yeah. superstar. So I think, you know, developing him and, and all of those things has like really taken me to a different level of like horse management and training and all of the things that, you know, I wish I had known when I was in my early twenties. Um, but I really do think he's the best horse I've had to date at least the most maybe he wasn't as talented or scopy or all the things as cadet or you know um he's smaller he's got a smaller mm -hmm. stride but his heart is amazing and I think the partnership is really special between us and we're going on seven years now of being together and um he's 13 and he feels amazing and yeah. I'm hoping that I can just kind of keep him going at least through like 16 and then if scotty wants to take over she can do that so um it's definitely been up and down but i think stepping away from it and learning to just love the process and developing the young horses that's a big passion of mine so i think it's really um made me appreciate when it's up and when you feel like you can't do anything wrong and then to be able to survive those lows and like when it's yeah. not going well and to just you know, not get too discouraged to just keep yep. putting your head down and come out and just try to figure it out and know that it's, you know what you're doing. It's going to come back together. It just, you know, it kind of ebbs and flows the sport and you got to just got to roll, roll with the roller coaster of it all. Yeah. It, it, it is such a roller coaster. Yeah. yeah. And kind of like no matter what level you're at, it can be a roller coaster. A million percent. And, <laughs> and never to think that you have learned it all. Like I think right. as you, for me, as I've gotten older and as I've gotten more experience, I realize how much more I need to learn and how much better I can be. And, you know, I think that that's when you know that you've failed is when you think that you know all of the things and that you can't learn from or can't learn anymore. I think you can learn from everyone, even if they're kids or not professional you can see things that you're like oh I don't want to do that or oh that's interesting I didn't think about that like you know from even from people that have nothing to do with show jumping and we've taken a lot of our program from outside of this discipline which I think um gives us an edge uh at least with getting horses broke and all of the mm -hmm. all of that um you know yeah and I think having that to focus on like having the young horses and, and other parts of the business sustains you through when competition maybe isn't going your way. hundred percent. Yeah. And you mentioned, um, you know, your mom's business and, and working as an executive assistant. Um, what did she teach you or um, the man that you worked for about running a business or being an entrepreneur? Do you think? My mom has always been someone who dabble, like does a lot of different, wears a lot of different hats, you know, yeah. and um, I like to be busy. Uh, it's funny because when I was young, I was probably like I was a lazier kid and didn't like to work hard. Um, but as I've gotten older, like I really like to be doing things all the time. Like I don't really like to be sitting still. Um, and uh I think just having different passions. I have a passion for health and uh, living a clean, organic um, lifestyle. And 
I've been able to implement that into my horses uh, with their diets and all of that. And then that's actually how we started our new company, O3 Elixirs. Okay. Um, so we can get into that. But I, but yeah. I think just being around my parents who like they do commercial real estate. My mom has her production company, but then she also does distribution and she also, you know, does the um accounting for so many different companies of that she runs and then our, you know, Ashley Bond show jumping and um just doing so many different things. I, I just like really yeah. I think it's I think it's exciting. Like um you kind of don't limit yourself. Like she's a boss lady and she's a strong woman and she's also like super family oriented and puts her family first. So I was like, yeah, I mean, as a woman, you can, you can do it all if you have a good uh, family unit behind you, which with my husband, uh, my daughter, like I couldn't do what I'm doing without him because he keeps everything going at home. They're actually getting here tomorrow, which will be really nice. So mm -hmm. yeah. So I mean, without that, I definitely my life would be looking a lot different. Yeah. But um, I'm very fortunate. I think the, you know, seeing somebody like your parents or, you know, a, a, a parent figure in your life be able to multitask and, mm -hmm. and still be there and be present. And I think it's just a, a really cool thing to have. And you're lucky if you have it, you know, mm -hmm. it's, um yeah not thing. everyone gets yeah. that I'm I'm right. very like my parents are married over 40 years and like any marriage you know you have ups and downs but they have shown like that you know love and family and perseverance is what it's all about and then they do a lot of like the business stuff is you know my dad's very supportive of my mom and um she's been very supportive of the horses and like dad that's mm -hmm. been dad's passion since he retired from you know acting and uh, but he also helps her like, you know, behind the scenes with that, uh, with her mm -hmm. business. So, you know, it's it's cool to see that like they can do all the things that they love, but they can also like do it kind of together. Um, so they're not like excluded and feeling left out and all of that. So right. I, I I took that from them also, I believe, I feel. And so like my husband helps with running the farm at home and and stuff mm -hmm. like that. So it's good. Is your husband a horse person? He's become a horse person. Yeah, okay, that's what I thought. <laughs> he he was a professional soccer player. He grew that's up in right. Belgium. Mm -hmm. Um, so he knew nothing really about horses before we met, but we've been together 10 years. Uh July 11, well, July 11th is our 9-year wedding anniversary, but we got together at the end of June of mm -hmm. 20 um 2014. Yeah. Yeah. So it's 10 <laughs> years together. So he's, and he loves the horses. Like he really embraces it and um, he'll go and like lunge Scotty's pony and get him tacked up. And um, he's, he, he knows actually quite a lot. Like he's very, uh, he watches and he's always like, oh, this Grand Prix is going on. Let's put it on clip my horse. Like more than me. <laughs> I'm like, wait, what? <laughs> okay, sure. <laughs> but he's really into it. And he's really into the breeding and bloodlines and all of that oh, stuff. Cool. Like it's, yeah. So he just has a passion for it, which is awesome. Yeah. I feel like other athletes can pick up on. For sure. On, and he gets uh, the life. The sport. Yes. Yeah. He gets the he life because he lived and... a very similar mm -hmm. um, travel and like he doesn't ever, you know, make me feel guilty for having to go and be. And he like, like when I'm competing and working and gone like he just lets me do my thing he he gets it which is yeah. huge yeah yeah that focus that you need at yeah. this level is and the the time commitment oh yeah is is yeah. so great so that's awesome that you have no i'm very blessed i'm very blessed supports you oh yeah <laughs> and, Good. and and i know for a lot of uh female professional athletes it's kind of a major business decision if you will um to have kids so how's having your daughter made you better at the sport i think having scotty definitely has made me a better um athlete and a better just all around better in like running a business and um i think having patience mm. and maybe um my goals have shifted 
Um, I just, I don't know. I kind of look at this as like maybe something her and I will also do together. If, you know, she's riding and I'm not like forcing her to ride because I don't want to do it that way. But if she does want to do this, like I feel like it could be a really amazing situation where I can then just kind of focus on her more and do, you know, have a couple horses for myself and obviously still compete, but maybe shift the focus a bit, um, which I'm totally fine with. Um, but yeah, I think, I think it also made me able to handle like the downs Mm -hmm. easier because I have my, I've her and my husband and my family. And I, I don't know, I, I kind of look at the big picture and it's, not just so tunnel vision on like this sport and your results. And it's more like, okay, this is great. And this is what I do. And I love it. But at the end of the day, like my family's most important Mm. and my, and my kid. And I just, no matter what happens to me out there in the arena and as long as she's good and they're good, like I, it's not that bad. It's not the end of the world, like perspective. It put a, (laughs) put it into perspective. So, um, and I think it also made me, um, a smarter competitor because maybe I'm not on the edge, like redlining as much mm-hmm. like danger wise, like, cause I was a bit too gung ho, I would say before. Um, so I think it's kind of made me pull myself back and like, maybe I don't win as much or win by four, three seconds or whatever, but I'm more consistent. I think mm-hmm. I'm more, I, I just have that little bit of a of a governor. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Where it just is like, you know, it keeps that self-preservation there a little bit more than I had before. (laughs) Right. Um, So yeah, I, all in all, I, I'm, you know, I'm obviously really happy to be a mom and I couldn't imagine not being that way. And now with my sport, I think it just, it's just really been a a great thing. I recently, saw one of my I recently saw one of my friends she's looking she's a professional she does a lot of beginner stuff and um she's looking for a horse but she just had her fourth child earlier this year so she was like I would like a horse I'm looking for something I'm a mom of four like I can't be riding the bucking broncos anymore yeah no exactly (laughs) I I really like now I'm you know, okay, the Olympics are coming. So I'm really careful about which horses I'm sitting on. Like I have, mm-hmm. I'm here with Brittany Raflowitz and um, her partner, Katie Sparks and like Brittany showing my young horses. I'm like only riding the ones that I know really well, because even then they, some, they could trip, fall down, like something right. happened, but I'm really trying to just not put myself on, on horses that are inexperienced or that I don't know. Um, and then also for after the games, like I'm really, I, I enjoy like flatting the young ones and all of that, but you know, I, I've been letting Brittany show my six-year-old even like before. Um, Cause I had that fall um, at the beginning, at the end of WEF. And I don't know, I just, I, I'm a little bit more cautious with yeah. riding the ones that, you know, could put you into the ground, not, not because they're being bad, but just cause stuff happens. I think, you know, the decision to have kids is a is a huge one um, in life, but also when you're an athlete, because, you know, it's certainly a physical and mental huge change to go through. Um, And then in addition to that, you know, you've made a huge business decision for yourself as a rider to move across the country (laughs) and um, and base in Florida instead of. California. Um, how did you anticipate that it would help you in business? Um, well, I mean, Wellington is Wellington, so you have the best of the best. And I find that, uh, California was also just getting really crazy, Mm -hmm. um, for a lot of reasons and so expensive. So I was like, I mean, I was drawn to Wellington. I try. I actually almost moved there back in 2010. Mm-hmm. Uh, we felt, you know, but uh, it didn't happen. wasn't meant to be at that point. Um, but I just felt like I wanted to be somewhere where I could have my family and do the sport at the top level, and it'd be like right outside my back door. So yeah. um, my husband and my daughter love Florida, and her school there is incredible. She goes to King's Academy, and that 
honestly would be the reason I'd be in Florida, just even if the horses weren't there, because it's such a good school. Um, and then being able to be home for six months of the year or longer, actually, and be able to just ride my motorcycle over to the showgrounds and compete and be, you know, back home during the middle of the day if you have a break and stuff like that. It's just you can't get that in California. Yeah. You know, you can't really get that anywhere else. Anywhere. <laughs> so for me, it was a no brainer. Um, I also love the fact that like for young horses, they have, uh, you know, Abby Michon started the stuff at Jim Brandon and then the Ridge. So I really only keep FEI horses at WEF. And then I can do for really inexpensive, kind of like Europe, you can just, you know, pop over for the for the classes there. And um, it makes it really cost effective. Um, so yeah, you kind of get all of it in one small area and I love it. Yeah. And yeah. when did you, we've been kind of teasing about your new company, but when did you decide to start your new company? Um, so funny story that was on May 18th. <laughs> so literally it just happened. Oh my gosh. Um, yeah, we we so okay it came so jennifer uh apelian is my business partner okay. and i brought in a really good friend of mine who's um an rn and has a medical spa who i've known for many years named elise lazel um so i brought her in on my side so it's the three of us a uh, woman-owned business um jen actually started equigreens which has sponsored me since she was in California. So it's the hydroponically grown grass that she brings and drops off six days a week. She ozonates the barley, um, grows it in ozonated water. And then she adds all these amazing minerals um, to her product. And then uh, it's like a living pre and probiotic among so many other benefits that it gives your horses. So she's been doing that for a long time. And then about over a year ago, she came out with an oil version um, and also like ozonated and um, she added carbon 60 and minerals for the horses because they take it internally because hmm. this is actually a cute, like a great, like food grade uh, hmm. organic stuff. Like the oil we use is... Uh, so pure and like it's kind of comparable to olive oil uh it has a higher smoke point it's called camelina oil um so we had been just through her company and my horse is looking amazing and so many clients of hers using it and then she has an oil dog version of the horse oil that dogs can get and put on their coats and i mean it grows hair back so fast for dogs with alopecia and like fungus and any type of uh honestly anything if your dog has a snake bite my friend's dog had a snake bite on its leg in two days it healed it like cra crazy things so i had been saying to her for a while like Cause she was like, Oh, put the oil on it. Like always, you know? <laughs> so I literally have a bottle of oil and a spray thing that like, if a horse gets any type of fungus or a cut or a rub, put the oil on it scratches. It's healing mm -hmm. scratches in two days, a horse here that wow. it would take a week and never was like good. It would just be good mm -hmm. enough to show again. Two days healed scabs came off pink skin, like shocking. But anyway, so I just kept saying we should be doing this on our skin. Why aren't we doing this on our skin? Like this is, and then um, she's like, yeah, yeah. So she's like, I'll make you one without the minerals, obviously, because we don't want to put the horse minerals that they're supposed to be eating on our face. <laughs> but the product is human. It's human grade. It's organic. It's um, it's not. So the Camelina oil isn't really known about outside of horse and dog consumption but it's actually for cooking and it's actually for skincare. It's just not common because if you don't do what we're doing with it, it's got a very bitter, pungent smell. Ah. So the benefits of the, of the oil are mind blowing, but I can see why people or companies are like, why would we use this? It doesn't, it's got kind of a weird, funky smell to it. But when you do what we're doing to it, it has the most amazing sweet rain scent that the ozone does. 
Mm. Um, and then she had found this, um, it's a Nobel prize winning molecule called carbon 60, and it's 170 times more potent than vitamin C Mm. for internal and topical. Um, it like, it works great for both things. So, and there are some skincare companies that are starting to use carbon 60, but it's still not really known about. So just those like three applications, so like ozonating, camelina, and carbon 60, like that sets us apart because I have yet to find a company that use it, does all that together. Mm-hmm. And then we, uh, I started using the products I threw out, literally stopped using everything else. I wash my face with organic bar soap, like facial bar soap. Um, and then I just put my oil on and it literally is just mind blowing what it's done. Um, and then I got, like, I had my dad start using it and then my mom is using it. And I actually, Roy started using it a few days after me. Um, and he is not a skin person. Like he doesn't do anything. And it's like, it grows hair back. Like his hair is fuller. So he was like losing some hair here and here. Ah. And, um, so anyway, and then we started looking into essential oils. We have a, a doctor who's also a chemist that's on our team that we have obviously conferred with and made sure that like the amounts and all the things we're doing are very safe. Um, We're using much less of what the typical essential oils and products would be because our base is a lot of those, you can't put them directly on your skin. Well, yeah, you have to dilute them, but our dilution is just like it. Babies could be using our products. Like it's Mm -hmm. literally for everyone. Um, And you know, each one of our products, we use different essential oils for like the scalp and hair and for the face and the body. And we came out with a lip slick and uh, a zit zap roller, (laughs) um, which we're also going to come out with an eye 360 eye. Um, So yeah, it's, it's, it's cool because it came from the horse Mm -hmm. products. Yeah. And it ties in together. Um, But the, but what we're seeing it do is just, it's like a medicinal um organic natural product without any chemicals fillers added it like it's literally so pure mm-hmm. but it works so well um <laughs> it's shocking so i'm i'm excited for you to try it like it's yeah me it's too. been really cool really cool. i have had a lar- a hard time finding something like you know i'm a bit older than you so <laughs> that's My, okay uh, you look things great are, thanks <laughs> but you know as you age things start 100% uh, changing and like my skin has started changing I never had breakouts when I was a teenager yeah ever. my skin was great yeah and then I I hit 43 and my skin's like freaking out and yeah the hormones are insane so yeah yeah that can help that part it, of it Good. yeah it's really cool because I feel like each one of the things that we use, like the ozonating oils on its own is like, makes it like a superfood for your skin. But then the organic camelina on its own is a superfood for your skin. And then the carbon 60, if you just were using that in like any oil would be a super, like, so I feel like all three together has like made this incredible power punch for your skin it's just <laughs> it, it, like you can shave with it like you don't need to use any moisture like the body oil you can use it as shaving cream you mm-hmm. don't get razor burn you don't mm-hmm. have to moisturize if you use it as shaving cream you don't have to moisturize after like wow. it's amazing for sunburns it literally stops you from peeling it takes the burn away like acne rashes rosacea psoriasis eczema um we're using it i'm like testing out a deodorant for mm-hmm. it like a you know a, a perfume roller um because you know I don't like any chemicals I don't want mm-hmm. you know it also protects you from free radicals from the environment the oil is UV protectant like it wow. protects you from UV rays which is a misnomer that oil makes you burn which obviously baby oil would but yeah. our <laughs> oil actually provides sun protection right so you know it's the list of things that this product helps with is really vast like it's it, it's like a bit overwhelming because it's so many things like it's like oh you got that try putting the oil on it like and then you're like oh my gosh how did this just fix this like it's supposed to help with cold sores and um I mean the the my 
my uh, friend put it on her son's baseball elbows that like huh. are never mm-hmm. and overnight like they went to it, it fully moisturized it and it like cured his like dry ashy elbows huh. like weird stuff that's it's so cool uh-huh. it's just so I cool. like the uh, dad in my big fat greek wedding who puts windex <laughs> on everything <laughs> yeah yes. put the oil on it <laughs> and i wanted to call it 3 like we called it 360 because really like all of our products you could technically use from head to toe mm-hmm. on anyone I mean, put it on the bottoms of your feet, your, your cracked skin is gone. Like it's oh. your calluses are pretty much non-existent. Like my cat, it's unbelievable what it's done for that. And um, yeah, I, it, it's a wound. It, they used ozonated oils, I believe for wound care, like for trauma mm. yeah. a long time ago. Like it's just a super power. Interesting. It's really cool. Yeah. What did the process look like for you to be like, okay, we've got this great product. How do we make a company? How do we get this on the market? How do we find a distributor? Like, well, did, we are that... doing all of that. So really, yeah, it's in house. So that's also wow. for quality control. Like, we're what's cool about so Elise, our partner, is in California. So Jen and I are like hands on in Wellington. Um, she fortunately with Equigreens. She was already doing all of this stuff. So, Mm -hmm. and she'd gone through like, you know, she'd been through a lot. So she knew like how to create this really fast. So we, by the time we decided on May 18th to like do this as a company. And by June 11th at 7 p.m., we went live on our website. Wow. And that was a lot of thanks to her because I've, never really done any of that so as far as getting the llc and all of the machinations you have to go through um the website finding people you know finding pack uh many um people to get the packaging we wanted and Mm -hmm. she was able to to do all that but um we just are doing it in-house right now we're definitely looking into potentially going to a manufacturer if it gets to the point where we just have to fill too many orders because Mm -hmm you know, this is, that's not my full-time job, right? (laughs) Maybe eventually it will be if it's that successful, which I hope it will be because it's helped so many people already. Mm -hmm. Um, but I think, you know, for now it's nice to just be able to control it all and make sure that the quality is exactly what we want. And, um, yeah, I think because it's also like an ozonating process, we have to really find the right manufacturer. Right. Um, and, but yeah, like I did all the labels for the products. I, you know, I just banged it out and um, <laughs> it was fun. I enjoy doing that stuff, you know, and we have help at home and my husband will help, um, you know, when he's there and and packaging and getting it all out and stuff like that. But um, yeah, it's it's definitely been a lot and we've been busy, but I'm not complaining. I mean, it's exciting though, when you're starting something and you really believe in it and you think it's cool and especially if it's helping people and you've had, you've had good feedback from it. Um, Yeah. That's the time when you're like, so cool. Yeah. It's okay for me to stay up until 1am. Yeah. package labeling yeah like like, you wouldn't want to do that otherwise but no but I think like for me and that's with any of my sponsors like I work with companies and products that I truly believe in that really work so then I'm really passionate about it and obviously then I talk about it a lot because I'm Mm -hmm. like oh my gosh this is so exciting if you only knew like what it did or what it's done for people in such a short time but yeah I mean it's just it's just been like it's a labor of love we all are so passionate about you know, getting away from these chemicals and harsh products. And I feel like a lot of companies, they add fragrance, which is so bad for your hormones and so bad for you. So that's why I wanted to create our base with these beautiful essential oils to create healthy perfumes that actually are more than just smelling good. They actually are like good for your skin and have like benefits. Mm -hmm. Um, So yeah, I mean it's it's been it's yeah, it's really cool. I could talk about it for hours. <laughs> but what's been the hardest part of putting this together? The social media ah, is exhausting. I cannot. <laughs> it's so difficult. Um, 
the algorithms and all. I mean, power to the people that can do this stuff because it's a full-time job. And I'm yeah, like, and my partners and I were like, we don't have time. Like we need to get someone to like help us with content and scheduling these posts because mm. I really, really hate doing, <laughs> I don't like being on camera. I don't like having to video myself and I'm having to do it so much. And I'm really <laughs> like, this is, I mean, I have to obviously, cause it's so new. Um, but it's just like, it's overwhelming. It's really mm. overwhelming. And to find out like what works, what doesn't work, what do people like, how do I get people to engage? Like, I'm trying, I don't want any, like the thing about our company and I wanted from the beginning and we all wanted was to be genuine. There are no filters. There are, there is no Photoshop. These are real women, real people, real results. Like I wanted it to be nothing like, I mean, I don't trust any other company out there because I don't know what they're doing. Like, I don't know if those results are real, but I'm telling you, like, it might look more not so fancy on our Instagram because it's mm. actually like us doing it, but that's because it's just, it's real. Like it's, right. yeah. these results are real. And I want our brand to be known as like, you know, genuine, no, like I don't want face tune. I don't, I want <laughs> real women. I want real people. I want, right. you know, uh, I'm just, this, this world has become so superficial yeah. And so fake with like all of these filters these people use. And I feel like we got to get back to what matters and like natural beauty and embracing what makes us different and mm. finding the beauty in that and being the most beautiful you, you can be not all being like cookie cutter Kardashians. <laughs> I, I hate to say that, but it's like, they don't even look like what they looked like. You know what I'm saying? Uh, like yeah. they're, yeah. I knew that like they grew up in Hidden Hills. Like I saw them before all of the stuff they did. They didn't look Mm -hmm. like that. They were all beautiful, but they looked unique. Yeah. They just all look the same, (laughs) you know, and I don't, and I have a daughter. I want her to be, I want her to embrace her God given beauty inside and out and not feel like she has to throw on all these face tunes and adjust her face on these apps and put all Mm -hmm. these filters on for people to, to, you know, like her or, think she looks good I I, and honestly really really shouldn't care what other people think but that's something you're never going to get away from we all do exactly yeah but that's why with my social media like and my personal account everything I never facetune I never put filters because I know there's a lot of impressionable girls that follow me Mm -hmm. and I want them to see like you know I deal with melasma from from birth control when I went off of it when I was a kid, you know, and discoloration on my face and, and things like that. Like nobody's perfect. These models and stuff, they all have stuff, but they Photoshop so much that these girls are trying to attain this false sense of beauty that just does not exist. Right. So I really, I, that's also part of the brand that I want to just be like this oil, what, ever however it's a total god thing because it's all his like he made all this stuff we're using um or gave us the tools to make it like with the carbon 60 but i feel like it gives you that photo finish naturally like Mm -hmm. you look like you almost have a filter on a lot of times like when you're when you have it on during the day and it's just natural so it's you know i i that's a big passion part of the business as well for us. Yeah. Yeah. And um, we talked a little bit, like you hope it'll keep growing. You obviously have lots of ideas for your new products um, and you'll kind yeah, of too see. Many. <laughs> <laughs> too many. Too many. I need to calm down. Yeah, no, that's hard though. It's hard to know, you know, how, how much to bring to market and when and when it's yeah. ready and you know do you have enough brand recognition to on your original products so that your next ones will catch on as well yeah i think what's nice is like the little that's why i was kind of like oh i think the zit one like it's so little and it's it's easy for us to make cuz every it's just a few different essential oils that kind of change things and um same with the eye roller and stuff like that so we can just do those um quickly but yeah, mm-hmm. to come out with like a deodorant, which I'm work we're working on, 
that's going to take time because it's so hard to find a natural deodorant that works. And they don't. Um, they don't work. But I, I, I have, <laughs> I, I have faith in mine, you. <laughs> you know, and I think, um, I think I'm onto something with it. Um, and then, you know, massage oils. And then I also like, we could do a cuticle one for nail salons and, you know, um, and facial mist and, there's just so many yeah. avenues to go, but for right now, our three core ones and then the lip and the zit, I think we'll stick probably with that for now. And then maybe attack on that eye roller pretty quick. So we've been three weeks in business. That's so cool. So it's so cool. And I just, we love like the three of us women, like we love helping people. And um, mm-hmm. it's just like, it's, it's just really special. Like, and so mm-hmm. I hope that, you know, it reaches more people because it really is that good of a product. So, you know, knowing this is such a new company, uh, but you have lots of ideas and and a few products, have you guys set goals or KPIs for yourself to reach, um, you know, in certain amount of time, like six months, a year down the line, or is it kind of organically just growing as it, as it is? Yeah, I'm, um, so we're just kind of letting it organically grow, but um, I'm fortunate to have some really good friends like Maria from Sunutra, who's um, put me in contact with uh, her people that work with Amazon and stuff like that. So, um, mm-hmm. you know, and we have it out to some influencers that uh, are just starting to get the product. Um, so I think doing it that way, hopefully it's going to um, really take off and hopefully in six months it's it's doing really well. I mean, we already have done extremely well in the first almost three weeks of being in business. Um, so I'm hoping it just continues to grow the way it's been growing. And, um, but we don't want to, we don't want to like force it. I think it's, what's nice about this is it's all of our side gigs. I was just going to say, it's not your, so it's, you're not depending on it for your no. income. No, it would be nice to have it eventually be all of the things, which I believe because the product is that good, it will be, but we're also, there's no pressure. So it just, we're kind of just, if a, if a year from now it's doing all the things amazing. And if in six months, wow, shocking, but like, there's really no, um, there's no pressure on us. Um, but fortunately we all have like a lot of connections, um, Mm -hmm. So like, it looks like we might be in, um, in a booth for the games, um, through a friend and she said she would love to carry the line and give it out to influencers in their gift bags. Oh, cool. So things like that, that just, I feel like, you know, God is just leading the way on this. I've always like, my faith is very, you know, all three of us are very, um, very like-minded and we're all, you know, Christian women. And I feel like we kind of have just given it to God and and let this kind of happen how it's supposed to happen. And so far things have fallen into our laps that you, a lot of companies would only dream about. And um, so, yeah, I think it's just, it's just a fun experience. It's just really cool. And I just want people to enjoy the products and get the awesome benefits that we have had um, so that it can make them feel better, look better, you know, be more confident in who they are and, uh, you know, help cure things or help, you know, help them with things that maybe, like you said, medication and stuff mm-hmm. like that, where they can have an alternative to something that actually works. So yeah, yeah it's exciting. So cool. I, I do have one more question. Yeah. Do you think, do you think in the future you guys would sell the company, like have a big exit? I mean, I don't want to. And I know that my partners would probably, we're we're usually very like-minded and um, Mm -hmm. I mean, never say never, but I'm not really a fan of any of those big companies because they all... Mm -hmm. They they could change it. They could change it. And then you're not really getting the qual the the quality the i have to say the one the one company that their friends like my mom's friends with um the owner um the company's called retruve yeah. and um it they grow like they have their own farm and they grow their own like organic avocados and like because they don't mm-hmm. trust 
you know, other manufacturers and stuff like that. So yeah, I could see not that company, but I could see like if it came down to that and partnering with a company like that, that I know the people and I trust the people and we could kind of do it that way. I could see maybe something like that, but not to fully sell it. I, yeah, I just, I would always want to have like a big hand and at least have between me and my partners, a controlling aspect in the company so that we make sure that it never is less than what it is. Mm. Yeah. You know, yeah. and yeah. we all, like I said, we all do well enough on, on our other, you know, businesses that, you know, this, this is just going to be like an added bonus, hopefully. Mm-hmm. Cool. Cool. Yeah. So at the end of each episode, we ask the same four questions to our mm-hmm. guests and Connor starts with the first. What is one action that women can take to make a big difference in their lives? Um, oh my gosh. Yeah. I think for me, um, my faith is the biggest thing, uh, in my life that keeps me sane. Um, you know, not having my faith and relying on God is, is when I find I start drowning. So, um, I would say that. And then letting that, you know, kind of guide you through your life and you really um, have nothing to lose, in my opinion. Cool. And what is the best habit that keeps you motivated personally? Mm, Just having a purpose. I think Mm -hmm. feeling like everything I'm doing is... um, either doing something good for, um, others or my family, um, not just having like a very, uh, not being close-minded on, um, what is this going to do for me? But, um, I like the bigger picture of, um, helping and, and, uh, whether it be like with the horses or the skincare line or, you know, just kind of, doing the right thing and being a good human, um, Mm -hmm. especially in the world that we're living in right now. Um, I think just trying to be set a good example, be a good role model. um, It's kind of what keeps me going and makes my life have meaning, you know? Mm, Yeah. Uh, What's your favorite horse movie? Sylvester. Oh, it's mine. That's my favorite movie. Really? Yes. Oh. And nobody has ever said it, and nobody really? has ever known it. Yes, it's been my I know. favorite movie because we're probably was... close to the same age. <laughs> <laughs> I'm I'm older than you are, but oh my god, that is like it's that because <laughs> Melissa Gilbert, yeah, um, grew up well, like she lived in Hidden Hills, and I my hand was in the 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 Hollywood. Uh, in Disney World was in the um you know the where they do the handprints. Mm-hmm. So my mom and her were friends and then um she took us when she got her hand in the walk of fame or whatever it was. And then oh, um, that's cool. Yeah, it was really cool. But okay, that's not why I saw of Sylvester, but mm-hmm. I just remember that scene with him riding um the horse at it uh at night, like at midnight. Yeah. And that was yeah. literally like yeah. <laughs> the most iconic and just mm-hmm. it, yeah i love that scene that oh was perfect <laughs> oh finally that's somebody so who even knows <laughs> what the movie is oh that's amazing yay <laughs> it only took 74 episodes <laughs> yeah <laughs> seven's my lucky number <laughs> <laughs> what's gonna happen yeah. that's so cool <gasps> yeah <laughs> and our last question is who would you recommend to be a future guest on this podcast hmm has to be a horse person. No, it can be anyone. My mom. That would be cool. Yeah, she's good at these things. She's <laughs> like, she's so inspirational. And okay, she's like horsey. Like, obviously, she's my mom. Um, yeah. But I feel like with what she's doing and what she's done in the movie industry and then just, you know, a woman in business and in a men's world, man's world, and then like being so successful and um, she's, uh, she has a small percentage in, uh, O3 elixirs as well, which is cool. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, 
that would be my awesome. person. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> send us her details. I yeah. will. I will. <laughs> well, thanks so much for joining us, Ashley. Of we course, really appreciate you. it. It was cool to talk to you Great. and hear that more about awesome. it. That was exciting to have Ashley on the podcast. You know, we haven't spoken to a ton of just straight equestrian athletes. And it's cool to hear, you know, her life in the business and kind of her career as a rider. And then to see how excited she is about um, this new business that she's working on. So, um, yeah, I I enjoy her. She's really funny. She's like the person you always want in press conferences um, because she's entertaining and, you know, so good in front of she says she doesn't like being on camera, but she's good behind a microphone. <laughs> yeah, she was great. I, actually, I I never even really gotten to talk to her, so it was it was so cool, so pleasant. I love her passion for her uh, product. I was thinking the same thing in my head when you were saying the thing about my big fat Greek wedding. When she was talking about the oil, I was like, should I say that or not? And then you said, it. I was like, yes, that's exactly what I was thinking. But hey, we need more stuff like that. That's going to take care of, you know, a lot of stuff. So it's really cool. It's cool that it came from the horse industry. Mm -hmm. And, you know, a lot of times it's the other way. So I like seeing right. it, that she's taken something that's working for horses and been being able to come back the other way. And I'm excited to try it because I, we, I've i been having a sh storm in my face since January because I tried to use retinol <laughs> and it's done nothing but make my skin terrible. And I've been, it's been a f battle ever since. So um, it's much better now. And I've been using castor oil, but I would love to see what this oil does and hopefully it'll fix all my ailments. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And the ailments of aging. And like she said, like, you know, I've perfectly accepted the age that I am and, and what comes along with it. But yeah, if it would just help out a little, that would be great. I, I, I'm i not quite there yet. I don't think I'm quite, I still think I'm like 25 <laughs> some <Okay>. days. <laughs> then I get out of bed and I'm like, oh, wait, no, I'm definitely not. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I I liked how she talked about her parents too and yeah. talked about learning from them because I think a lot of times when you're young you don't really see what you're learning or you're picking up on and right. like for me I'm able to look back and say yeah like I have a good work ethic because of my right. parents that yeah. was something that was just not even like hot per se but it just was ingrained in all of us. They yeah, modeled it for you. Exactly. They were, yeah. they were models. But I always think of that um, meme where it's like, oh, my parents handed me down work ethic instead of generational wealth. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hi, thanks. <laughs> Hopefully yeah, it's work I, out. <laughs> I did like that. And, and, you know, her parents weren't in the industry per se and just being able to, watch her mom, you know, be, like she said, be a total boss in an industry that is extremely male dominated in the yeah. film industry and, um, and be successful. I'm sure that rubs off, <laughs> you know, and, and can give you a lot of, um, you know, key qualities that, that make you a good business person as well. Um, yeah, and I am shocked at how quickly they pulled that business together. Me too. I mean, I almost fell out of my chair when she said it was, it's only been like a month. Because um, as you know, I've been working on a business that yes. I'm, it, and I'm working on this development and it's a tech business in the equine industry. And I mean, it's been eight months and it's yeah. not even the part of getting this platform developed. It has been more of the, making sure we have the finances and, right. and, you know, trying to find who is going to be the developer and going through um, filing the LLC and partnership right. agreements and like all these other things. Opening that are, a bank account. Yes. But yeah. yeah. 
transferring the money into the bank account. So then you can pay the developer because, you know, when you're trying to wire money to India, the <laughs> bank like flags you for a week. Right. <laughs> so, I was like, wait, what did I do something wrong? Cause I thought I was like following this flow <laughs> the way. And she's like, Oh, it's been like since May 18th. I'm like, what? That's uh, amazing. Like, that's so amazing that they were able to it is. do that. So yeah. Cool. And I think, um, it was cool that she got to partner with a friend and, and, you know, people, two friends, people that she knows that she trusts and she's used in other ways, their products. So it does sound like it was kind of meant to be that everybody could bring their specific knowledge and talents into it and be able to, um, you know, get it off the ground and going. Uh, that's exciting. And it'll be cool to see where it goes from here. Yeah, it doesn't feel like it's forced. Like it is definitely exactly. growing authentically and and that so that's really cool for them. And you know, I I look at that for myself and I say, yeah, the way I've been doing things with this business, it's been slower, but certainly hasn't been um a uphill battle every step of the way. Right. So, you know, and I think that makes you feel like, okay, I'm on the right path. And it yes. makes you take the next step. Yeah. And I think, you know, like you said, like it is for Ashley, like this is a side business for you. So yeah. if you're not completely depending on it to pay your bills, then right. obviously you have the luxury of being able to wait a little longer to, to get things going. But I also think it's nice that you haven't, okay, you can set goals and say, you know, we want to have this done by this date and everything. But right. if you don't make the deadline, you know, you're not killing yourself or right. over it and that you can still keep moving forward towards yeah, it. Yeah, it's not a make or break. It's not going to, yeah. you know, yeah. break it. And, and the way I'm looking at this too is it's an experience, something I haven't experienced yeah. before. I'm doing things I haven't done before uh, yeah. and I'm learning. And so even if it wasn't successful, I would still feel like I learned enough about it to, to prepare me for something else. Right. That's cool. So, that's a good yeah. mindset. Yeah. So that's, that's kind of where I'm at, but it was really good to hear that, but I was definitely quite shocked. So um, <laughs> that's that's great for her and i'm excited to use the product and i know we have a um, a lot going on so we should get going and wrap it up for today so find the links to today's guests and the show notes at www.eqbusinesswomen.com equestrian b2b is out twice a month on the first and the 15th you can find out more at eqbusinesswomen.com and follow us on Facebook and Instagram. Find Equestrian B2B wherever you get your podcasts and be sure to follow, subscribe, and leave a review. You can have all 20 plus shows of the Horse Radio Network with you wherever you go with their free app for iPhone and Android. Go to your app store and search Horse Radio Network. Now go watch Ashley in the Olympics. 